Good evening. My name is Larissa Parra. This is an activity for the university uh, in advance in this one. Uh, the topic is sexual violence. Sexual violence is any sexual act or attempt to obtain a sexual act by violence uh, or coercion. Uh, it is considered one of the most traumatic and most common human rights violations. With movements like Me Too, survivors have the possibility of healing or interrupting sexual violence. The survivors can fight for the for their dignity and humanity. The sexual violence has become a serious public health problem uh, as a short or long-term impact on physical and mental health, such so as increase of the risk of infections as B HIV, a increase of the risk of suicide and also murder. Sexual violence can occur to anybody at any age. Children, women, people with disabilities, um, natives and Afro-descendants. This act can be perpetrated by parents, relatives, uh, friends and strangers as well as intimate partners. In our society, we find a lack of solidarity and humanization. That is why when people who suffer violations try to inform uh, the violations, they are intimidated. Uh, sometimes they are treated without respect and uh, the media misrepresent the concept of empathy towards victims of sexual violence. Thank you. Fine. Uh, Continue. No, Good I... evening. My topic is violence against Afro-descendant women. Yes. Figure shows that one in three women worldwide experience physical or sexual violence um, in the course of their lives, which causes devastating trauma, injury, and even death. Violence against Afro-descendant women is a problem that has always existed. Cases or sexual or other aggression against Afro-descendant women um, are almost never taken into account and is not seen on TV or radio. People of African descent have always suffered some kind of violence, whether uh, sexual, physical, psychological, or economic. That is why there are movements like Me Too that fight against um, social inequality, inequality and help people who suffer abuse so that their stories be heard and recognized by society. And finally, it is very important to reflect and support and there are moments there are moments uh, has me too. Thanks. Nate. Okay, um, uh, my name is Sergio Aria Rodriguez and I'm going to talk about racism. Uh, racism is the belief of to of a person think that he or she is superior to other people for the skin color, ethnicity, origin, or uh, beliefs. Uh, racism began uh, many years ago since the uh, beginning of hum humanity, but uh, there are some decades where it was uh, stronger. For example, in the United States, um, there are uh, some years 
where Rajitin was a, a strong, uh, for example, a white people, they didn't accept a black people. And uh, those black people, they cannot be included in some uh, groups, on some, uh, or they cannot participate of some activities that only white uh, people can do. Uh, for example, there are some aspects such as uh, cinema. Uh, there are some movies that show um, racism. For example, movies such as uh, Green Book. Uh, that was a movie that won Academy Award the last year. And it's a movie about racism. Also 12 years as late and American History X. There are other movies that maybe these three are very important in the topic of racism. <coughs> uh, in other aspects such as soccer, um, uh, I like to watch soccer. Sometimes in soccer matches, uh, some players, they practice racism because uh, maybe uh, black players, they play in Europe or some teams. And FIFA, uh, they punish, in this moment, they are punishing racism uh, in a hard way. Uh, still, in the world, exists racism. Uh, of course, the number is, uh, I say that is less than in the past. But there are some countries like the United States that uh, uh, still racism has um, a strong uh, aspects. For example, in 2010, um, there are some people that they were uh, black people, that they were punished uh, with sentences, for instance, for uh, traffic drugs or uh, commit some crimes. Black people were more uh, punished and uh, went to jail than white people, yes? Uh, I believe uh, that racism is something, for me, something absurd and ridiculous. Because of course, as human beings, we should accept and respect everybody without a color, a skin color, or ethnicity or beliefs. Uh, also, I believe that racism is something uh, that should be punished in all countries in a hard way. And I believe that uh, people uh, that practice racism uh, should understand that as human beings, everybody will make part of the world. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Sergio. Sexual violence against women and people with disabilities. Nowadays, it's pretty common to find a news or newspaper, at least an article talking about um, a woman um, that is um, arrest uh, or attack at work or involved in a situation that is pretty common uh, that one of the people uh, in charge of committees uh, abuse is a, a, a familiar or a boss. And movements like uh, Me Too wants to create not only uh, a support group, but also uh, create conscience in people that every day is pretty common uh, that women um, be perpetrated or really um, involved in, in sexual attacks. Um, in my opinion, I think that in my opinion, I think that um, not is not only be worried about sexual attacks against women. It's only uh, is also be um, conscious that attacks are going to or are perpetrated also to with people with disabilities. And the most shocking part is that the number is going to increase uh, because these kind of attacks are perpetrated uh, not only at home but also in hospitals and other medical centers. Mm -hmm. And the worst, the worst part of this 
is that uh, these uh, kind of um, situations are uh, uh, are covered or are um, how can I say it are going to be hide uh, for people with uh, power uh, to avoid uh, the scandal. Uh, in this case, I don't know. I don't know if you remember when um, the the uh, one president of the United States, uh, Bill Clinton, um, uh, has a, a sexual a sexual uh, relationship with his secretary, and then she starts saying that he was he abused uh, her, and it was a big scandal. And then here in Colombia, a few years ago, uh, one girl was abused. Uh, after a, a surgery uh, for one of the of the nurses of the male nurses and uh, she and then she got pregnant so guys is we have we need to be part of this kind of movements to not only prevent but also to help this kind of victims because in this moment we are not talking about only women we are talking about men and we are, and we are talking about children too Yeah. Hi, good evening. Grazie, thank you. Uh, my name is Diana Novoa and my topic today is low wages workers. Uh, this kind of people in um, suffer sexual harassment in this um, in the industry of uh, fast food service and restaurants. Uh, most of the time housekeepers um, um, they suffer this kind of harassment <clears throat> by their boss <clears throat> or their supervisors or their managers. <clears throat> they try to be persuaded by their bosses to come out with them. They, they try to persuade them to um, have a, a kind of relationship with them and with their bosses. And if they don't accept, uh, sometimes they, they get fired or if they accept, they will have some more hours, extra hours to work. So, 40% um, of women in this kind of industry, they suffer this kind of, um, they experience this, this kind of um, unwanted sexual violence. And most of the time, they, when they complain, sometimes they don't even complain. Three of, out of four women, they don't complain at all because they are afraid of losing their jobs. And most of the time, they are poor women or poor people that they don't have enough money to to bring quit. the paycheck at uh, their families. Yes, to quit. So um, uh, they are afraid to speak. They sometimes they are in, especially in the United States, uh, they will be bring to the immigration because they don't have the papers. So sometimes they have to accept this kind of. Uh, uh, things and they take advantage of their bosses and their managers and they don't speak up they are afraid um, when I was 18 or 19 years old myself I was working in Melgar in El Parado Rojo I don't know if you know this place oh, yeah. and my boss was all the time behind me I was very young and I this happened to me he was all the time behind and trying to tell me things, saying that I'm, I'm beautiful, that my uh, uniform was so nice on me, and this was very uncomfortable situation. So when you are in this kind of uh, uh, things, you don't know what to do. But luckily, I was very young, and I talked to my parents, and I quit this kind of job. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a family, so I didn't need the job. So I, co I could quit. But a lot of people that are in this situation and uh, they don't know what to do. Um, luckily, there is this uh, movement that uh, is there to support them and to help this kind of, uh, this kind of, sorry, my kids are here, this kind of problems. And that's all. Thank you.